Hi everyone, in this video we will learn about different ways we can use to get a value from a J object in C Sharp. The JSON.NET library provides flexibility when reading values from a JSON object. So let's explore the four ways to do this. In our prepared project, we already installed the Nutsoft JSON library. We also have a test data class prepared with a single method. This method returns a single JSON object as a string. Now, let's proceed with the project and see how to get the value by a key from a J object in C Sharp and process this JSON string. First, let's add a new class and name it J object manipulation. We will use this class to show all four mentioned approaches. Now, once created, let's just remove this and make our class public. In this class, let's create a private read-only J object field and name it JSON object. Then we create a constructor where we populate the test JSON object variable by using the generate single JSON object method from the test data class. Lastly, since we want to parse the return JSON to J object type, let's call the J object dot parse method and provide the test JSON object variable as an argument. This parse method loads J object from a string in a JSON form. Now, with this initial preparation out of the way, we can start creating a first method where we will pass the key as an index to extract the value from the J object. Let's name it getValues using index. To get the name value from the JSON object, we use the JSON object variable, pass the key name as an index, and then cast the result to a string. Now, we can simply copy this line and paste it. Then, let's modify the name to year and the index as well. Just, we will cast this to an int. Now, the price key has nested JSON with amount and currency key value pairs. To get these values, we follow the same steps by providing the JSON object and adding the price as an index. But this time we have to convert the value of price to a J object using a cast. Then we can access the value of amount by using the price, passing the amount as an index and casting the result to an int. Let's copy this line, paste it and change the name to currency, index as well and the cast type to string. Finally, we will simply print the result as proof that this works. Now, in the program class, let's create a new instance of our J object manipulation class and use the jobject variable to call the get values using index method. As soon as we start our app, we can see the correct result, meaning that we successfully extracted all the values from the j object. So this works great and we can continue. If the JSON data is not deeply nested, we can use this method to get the values. However, if our JSON object has deep hierarchy, accessing a deep value can be a bit tedious. That's where the value t method comes into play. Let's tackle it next. Using this method, we directly pass the key as the argument to the method. In addition to that, we also pass the appropriate type as a type argument to the value t method. The method then returns the value already cast. That said, let's create a new get values using value method method. 
inside it we need a name and to populate it we use the json object field and call the value of the string type method and pass the name as an argument for the year we should do the same so let's copy and paste this line change the name to year the type parameter to int and the argument to year this time we don't have to extract the price object explicitly we can extract the nested properties right away so let's create the amount variable and call the json object dot value method provide the j object type and pass the price as an argument and then we can chain another call to the value of type int method and pass the amount as an argument we can copy these lines as well paste them and change this to currency the type to string and this amount to currency lastly we will print our result the same way we did in the previous method compared to the first approach using the value t method is less tedious when working with the nested json object because we can simply chain our calls to the value method however to get the correct value we have to pass the right key now again inside the program class all we have to do is called get values using value t method so let's start the app and we get a correct result the next way we want to cover is using the select token method to do that let's create another method and call it get values using select token so to extract the name we use the json object field called the select token method by providing the name as an argument and cast the value to a string the same can be done for the year so let's copy and paste this change the name to year cast type to int and change the argument now the true advantage of this method can be seen when working with nested objects so to extract the amount we can paste the previous line change the name to amount and change the argument to price dot amount we can copy this line paste it and change it here to currency the cast type and the argument as well lastly let's print the result as you can see when working with more complex json data the select token method would be the best choice of the three beyond basic usage it offers some advanced capabilities like querying json arrays using indexes supporting the json path queries and also supporting for link queue queries now to test this last implementation let's navigate to the program class and call our method when we call each of these methods discussed we get the same output in the console so did you use any of these methods in your project or maybe did you use some other method that we didn't mention it would be great to hear that from you so feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below now all this looks great but in each of the approaches we have covered so far we will get an exception or a default value for the converted type whenever the json key is missing that said let's look at an alternative approach by using the try get value method the try get value takes both the key and output variables as parameters then it tries to get the json token that matches the specified key if the token is found this method returns true otherwise it returns false let's demonstrate this by creating another void method named 
get values using try get value but this time we will only extract the name and the nested amount and currency properties so let's add an if statement and inside use the json objects try get value method and pass the name as a first argument and then out j token name token as the second one as we said if the method finds the key in this case the name it will assign the j token value to the name token and return true if it returns true we will extract the name by casting to a string the value of the name token and let's write it down to the console now for the price the check is a bit more complex we need to use the try get value method as well and pass the price and out j token price token arguments but also we have to check if the price token is j object and if it is to assign it to the price object then we use another if statement and call the try get value method but this time on the price object variable and pass amount and out j token amount token arguments so this is the same check we had when we extracted the name if the check passes we get the amount by casting the value of the amount token to an int also let's print the value of the amount variable let's copy this last part paste it here and change the first argument to currency the local variable to currency token this variable type to string the name to currency also the cast type to string and the name as well and also change the message we want to print now in the program class we can simply call this method as we did with the previous ones finally to test it let's start the app and check our result by using the try get value method if any of the keys we are trying to access is missing the method returns false this way we are not trying to access the values of a non-existing key the appropriate use case for this method is when working with json data from an api where the data does not have a fixed structure in this case if a key is missing our application won't break with this we will finish the video please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you like the video and want to support us of course there's that bell button you can click to get notifications from our channel thank you for watching and see you soon in the next one until then all the best